This video is sponsored by KEH Camera. So let's talk about buying your first film camera. So I was recently in a local camera shop and I saw someone a little bit younger come in looking to buy a film camera and they asked what was the quality difference between cameras. After hearing this question, this made me realize that if you never grew up with film or if you're like me and you were like on the cusp of when the film was going out, we don't really have too much experience with film cameras. So if you're getting started with film, I wanted to talk about what I consider the three main styles of 35 millimeter cameras. This will help you get a starting point to see where you would like to start with film photography and then you can move on from there once you start getting more used to it. So the first style of film camera is probably one of the easier ones and you may have used one in your lifetime, but these are the point and shoot cameras. Point and shoot film cameras are some of the easiest to use because basically the camera does everything for you. It focuses for you, it figures out the aperture, it basically does the whole exposure for you and there's not much that you have to do at all. I currently own a Vivitar, it's pretty cool. I haven't used it that much. I actually don't think I've ever even developed any of my film for it, so maybe I'll have a role soon that I can develop, but it's nice. I found it at a thrift shop and you pretty much load it up like any other 35 mil camera. And again, with point and shoots, there's no thinking on your end. Compose your shot, take the shot, wind it up, load your film. It's pretty straightforward. So this is the number one easiest way to start. I would consider this if you've never really done photography at all and you wanna get into film and also photography at the same time because then you don't have to think too much about the exposure triangle. You can focus mainly on composition and just working with film in general. Next up, we have our standard SLRs. These are the ones that you always see in stores and the stuff that everyone is buying, basically like your Canon AE-1. SLRs are honestly some of my favorite film cameras and they're a really great way to practice and learn photography. I actually have a video where I talk about that. Check it out right up above. But doing film photography can definitely help you get better at your digital photography. I own a Nikon FG20. This was one of my first film cameras and I actually found it at a thrift store for $10 in perfect condition. And the guy was pretty much like, everybody uses their iPhone, so I don't know why anyone wants this. <laughs> so I scooped that thing up real quick. This is the film camera I use the most. And again, because the aperture is on the lens and I have to figure out exposure and or use a light meter, this thing really helps you learn to see light and to understand what you're doing when you take your photos. Digital photography is great and all, but using a 35 mil camera and really being like, okay, what does my f-stop need to be? What does my shutter speed need to be to get the correct exposure on my film? It will make you such a better photographer. And if you had no idea what I was talking about with the exposure triangle, make sure to check out my video up above on that. I also have a Canon AE-1, but unfortunately the mirror is flipped up on that one, so I never had a chance to use it, but I'm thinking about maybe selling it to KEH camera and seeing if they can repurpose it and use it for anything else. And speaking of which, if you're still looking for a film camera and you're not finding anything in great condition at your local stores, you may wanna check out this video sponsor, KEH Camera. KEH Camera has been around for years and offers some of the best digital and film cameras on the market. Not only can you buy used gear, but you can sell your gear to KEH as well, and they repurpose everything, so the stuff is in absolute great condition. Honestly, I've been highly impressed at the condition of anything I've purchased from KEH myself. So far, I got a Sigma lens for one of my film cameras, which I'll be talking about in just a moment, but that thing was used and I mean, it pretty much was brand new. I'm a big fan of buying used as well, especially if you're a wedding photographer and you're looking to outfit your whole lineup of gear. It's better to buy some of your gear used so you can save a little bit of money. Speaking of saving, make sure to check out the links in the description below for a 5% bonus on your purchase and or on anything you sell to KEH camera. And now that you know where to find film cameras at a great deal, let's talk about the last type of 35 mil cameras, which I'll call the pro SLRs. 
So the pro or advanced SLRs are basically like digital cameras and I've actually absolutely love using these ones because they feel like I'm shooting digital but I have all the benefits of film. I currently own a Nikon N80 and this is my advanced film camera but basically the reason I call these advanced film cameras is because they work like digital. This thing shoots like five frames a second, so I can just hold it down and shoot it and it'll continually go through the film. It also rewinds the film automatically for me. And because Nikon's been using the same lens mount for years, I can buy modern lenses and put it on my old film camera. That's why I purchased the Sigma 35 art lens for Nikon and plopped it on that and oh my goodness, the results are just absolutely amazing. Another camera that's kind of like this is the Canon EOS One. It's basically a digital camera, but it shoots film. It's actually a really cool video that Danae and Andrew did where they're comparing Canon's last film camera, which is the EOS One, versus their first digital camera. So definitely check that out right up above. Now that you have all of your choices between a point and shoot SLR and advanced SLR, the next thing you have to start doing is getting used to different film stocks. When it comes to buying film, I'm a big fan of just trying out any film stocks you can get your hands on, but keep in mind it's gonna be costly if you're doing that, and just take your time and notice the differences between each film stock. The main one I'm currently using now is Portia 400 or 800, and it's pretty widely available. Unfortunately, and I only shot it like once, but I was really starting to love Fuji 400H, but they discontinued it. So rip 400H. I have two more rolls. Let me know in the comments below if you wanna see me shoot those. I'd love to shoot some sessions with them that I can show you all. Also, if you wanna get into black and white film, personally, the Ilford stuff is hands down my favorite. HP5 is amazing. I do tend to shoot on Tri-X, which is also Kodak, but I just love the Ilford stuff so much better. So Portra 400, Ilford HP5 are my suggestions as starting out for film. But again, if there's any film heads watching this who are more advanced than I am in film, let us know in the comments below what you think are great starting film stocks. So I hope this was helpful for you to see kind of the main types of 35 mil cameras. If you're getting started, these are the places you wanna start. And honestly, get yourself a film camera. Even if you're not sure if you should like dive into film, just do it. If you're a photographer at all, if you're getting started, film is the place to start. And again, if you don't have a local store or thrift shop, and honestly, even if you do half the time, the quality of the stuff there is pretty bad, make sure to get on KEH camera where the quality is gonna be absolutely amazing. And you can get yourself a little bit of a bonus when you use the link in the description below. Thank you all for hanging out. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe for more photography information. And I will catch you all next time. All right, peace.